female masculine. And I have the lovely Roxana here, who is herself a confidence coach. And I'm really excited to have you. I usually have uh, men on these calls, but I'm really excited to get a feminine perspective, uh, especially one that's you know, very conscious like yourself uh, to share some of your insights into this masculine feminine dynamic in the space of relating and you know sexual energy and and of course just um you know that that man to woman dynamic so welcome roxana thank you pleased to be here um uh, so uh, roxana was actually just telling me her story uh, over the last uh, five years going through um a little bit of her journey uh Roxana, I'd love for you to maybe like share just a little bit of kind of how, how you got to become a confidence coach before we dive in and, and then we can kind of just snowball from there. Okay. Um, well, I, five years ago, I started doing, I've been initiated into a, a technique that allows me to read people's energy and, and kind of see into the future, see into the past and kind of just see the person for who they are. And I've been doing that for five years. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and then I realized after five years that I need a little bit more impact um, to to have more impact on people because having just one of sessions wasn't wasn't enough. So then I slowly transitioned into coaching, and yeah, with with my coach right now, Thomas, we we found my my niche, we found my my thing. Uh, and that's being a confidence, confidence, confidence coach. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. And um, when it comes to your relationship with men, you, you consider yourself very feminine, right? You like to be in the feminine role. Tell me for you, what is it that you find like attractive? What, what attracts you to, um, to the, like, the, the men that you like in your life? What qualities do you see that actually ignite your attraction for them um well there are different types of men that i'm attracted to and actually i there is something attractive that i see in all men like all men have something that's attractive and, and beautiful and, and amazing so i see that in all men doesn't mean that i will date them all but i can definitely appreciate something in in everyone but yeah there, there are different types of men that i find attractive so, so some men I'm attracted to them just purely sexually. Mm -hmm. Some men I'm attracted to based on, um, you know, their like king archetype. You know the mm -hmm. way that and, and make them safe. And um, there are men that I'm attracted to based on their intelligence and their wisdom and what they can what can, what they can share with me. Um, yeah, so th there are different types, you know. You're talking. It's interesting. You're talking about different archetypes here. Um, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, the king archetype, that kind of very fatherly, loving figure that makes you feel safe. Yeah. You mentioned um, the wise, like kind of the magician archetype, the wise, the wise yeah. men, wise yeah. and intelligent. Yeah. They they share um, they share wisdom that help you open up. Uh, and tell me about the one that like is the very like sexual raw attraction. What <laughs> what archetype do you see that one in, or maybe is that a combination of a few of them? Mm. Usually, it's quite exclusive. I mean, there is there is the like sexual attraction to uh, also the king archetype and also the, the the magician, but the there is a certain quality with 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 this type of man, you know, the bad boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you wrote, what you, um, what you wrote um, in your last post about, you know, about um, the dark masculine. Yeah. Yeah, so there is just this certain type of like passionate dynamic that's very much like dominant submission thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, yeah, it's, it, it tends to be quite exclusive to that, that type of person. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is it about that energy that that really gets to you? Like, what is it that that really kind of penetrates your soul and just makes like, fuck, I like, I want this guy. Oh my god, sex is amazing. Mm -hmm. Just like out of this world. That's basically it. Like the sexual attraction is the main part of the connection. What do you notice about the way they behave? 
this type of man that's different than other men? What are some yep. characteristics that you notice about them? Very extremely self-focused. They know what they want, they know how they want it, they know when they want it, they, they have a very clear idea of their life and what they're doing, you know, their purpose and, and they're just like really focused on their shit. <laughs> Uh huh. And and why does that why does that attract you? Do you think like what about that makes it feel like, wow, I, this guy is someone I want to be around. This guy is someone I want to to sleep with, to energetically connect with. because uh, it's very masculine. Uh huh. It's very you know driven and very focused, very like one pointed, like very. Whew, you know, very pen penetrative. All right. So a little tape delay there, but um, I think what we were just talking about was um, you were telling me how that, that focus, that, that penetrative energy um, is really big turn on. And uh, it's interesting the way you described it, because I find that, it, that the way they demonstrate that and just their way of being in their life, the way they, they focus, the way they go for what they want, I think a lot of that can translate into like, this is how he must be as like a lover. This is how he must be as like a, um, someone that if I sexually connect with him, he's going to penetrate me the same way he's penetrating life. Right. Mm -hmm. There's that, there's that almost implicit connection between these two, this, this, uh, this energy. Yeah. 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 100%. And I think a lot of guys out there, they think like, well, I'm not like that. Like, you know, how do I, how do I be someone that I'm not? And I think it's like a common misconception that they, that they don't have that energy. What I find is that they usually just suppress that energy. And you probably experienced this, um, the nice guy, right? And tell me, like, when, you, when you're around the, the nice guy, tell me how that energy feels to you when you're around I'm, that kind of guy. I'm safe. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? I... Because it doesn't feel real, it doesn't feel authentic, it feels um, like a mask. And if, if there is a kind of, if there's that mask, then I don't know who, what's behind, and then I just cannot trust that person. Yeah. Like, if you can't trust them on the, like, just the interacting with them, like, how could you trust them to literally penetrate you, right? It, it seems so, it seems so uh, obvious. Uh, and yet I, I see a lot of guys um, out there that uh, really are deeply ingrained with this. I have to be nice. I have to pretend or I have to like do these things. And um, it's actually the exact opposite of what really, you know, awesome feminine women want, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah the thing with the energy, like everybody has that. Even women have that. Women have big, big energy, you know, like everyone, anyone can cultivate it. It's just like, it's available to all of us to, to cultivate so it's not that oh you know i'm not like that yeah maybe your like nature maybe your predisposition is not like that but if you want to be like that you can be like that yeah i totally agree i i think the energy dynamics that we all have are they can all be cultivated and, and the more we accept and embody them the greater mm -hmm. access we have to more power to to be a better version of ourselves right yeah. uh and with that said i think there's like another you know misconception out there that um, you can't show women your vulnerabilities or your insecurities or your weaknesses. Tell me from your perspective, um, when you see a man open up on that side, how does that make you feel? I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love when, when men can, can, you know, can just tell me honestly and, and candidly how, how they feel about me. That, that's, that's amazing. That's so hot. You know, and when there's a kind of, um, I think there's a difference in, in, in the way that things get expressed. Um, if there's this neediness that comes with it, then it's a bit like, oh, oh, mm -hmm. right? But if it's just like, okay, this is how she is, this is how I feel, here it is. That's, that's amazing, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting the way you described it, right? There's like, if there's like some sort of attachment to the outcome, like there, it's like almost if they're yeah. saving it to try to get something from you, then yeah. it, 
it doesn't feel so nice, right? It feels like uh, unsafe again. Yeah. But if they're just saying it just because like, this is where I'm at right now and this yeah. is what it is, then that, that's attractive, right? That vulnerability is something you can connect to. Uh, truth is sexy. Truth is sexy. So and whatever it can do. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think makes truth sexy? Like what about it makes it feel like nice to be around? Hmm, that's an interesting question. It's just real, you know, and authenticity um, is what creates connection, what creates, and we all love to feel connection, you know, human beings, we all need that, that social aspect of connection, whether men, women, you know, whoever, and, and true, sharing truth and sharing authenticity creates that deep bond, you know, whether it's a positive truth or, or a negative truth, like, you know, high emotions or, or things that are not so, not so pleasant, you know, pain and fear and stuff. So it just creates a deeper connection. Totally. I, I'm on the same page. I, I think that's like that. That's exactly what it is, is that it, it creates, um, it creates a safe space for them to also connect to that reality. Right. If I share like um, my jealousy or my feeling of, you know, inadequacy around that, uh, it actually just mm -hmm. brings you into my world and, and lets you feel those feelings too and see like, oh shit, like, yeah, I know that. And mm -hmm. that, that, that it creates almost a safe space where we're now we're all in the same world together. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Thank I think you. this is one of the things that I, I think that uh, so many people like are missing. The point is that like your humanness, your, your flaws are actually what make you a, a really attractive because it, it lets others be safe to have their flaws too. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. Like we can we can relax and just be ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to be perfect. It just doesn't feel that way, right? It feels mm -hmm. like we're trying hard to like look a certain way and yes. And then real connection is not possible because there there are these walls and and then it's not possible to have amazing sex either because there are these walls for intimacy, you know. Yeah. And it's just so stressful too, right? Like it just adds so much pressure and takes the joy yeah. out of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's nice to be real. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, how do you feel about like the, this um, idea? Cause this, I, I don't know if you ever heard the, the alpha male, um, right. you know, there's like a lot of different communities in, in this world that we're in that um, really push a specific type of alpha male that they have to be like, um, always strong, always, you know, dominant, always, it, it, it um, did you know what I'm talking about? That, that, what are your, what are your thoughts on that idea or that concept? Um, I guess if it's, if it's like a contrived forced personality or forced image, then it's, it, it's not attractive. I think dominance and being alpha is being the most loving. That, that to me means dominance. Uh -huh. And in, the, in part of that, do you, do you feel like that part of that is like being able to show feelings of weakness or feelings of insecurities, like being able to like show that, that, that there's some dominance in that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Just, just owning, ownership is dominance. And that's, that's being an alpha, like when, when, when you can own even insecurity and jealousy and all that stuff, you know, that's, that's badass. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the irony, right? I think a lot of guys think they, they have to never show that. And that, that, that in itself shows that weakness, that that actually is weakness to not be able to show it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Also, a lot of women struggle with that, you know, expressing really what, what is there. I think you, it's a human thing. You think it's what? It's a human thing. Yeah. It, what I found that is kind of interesting is that when one person steps in and actually opens themselves up, it, it, it makes others to feel safe to do it too. It changes the dynamic of the, the relationship mm -hmm. uh, completely. Like one of the things that I have people do in my program is to open up to the people that they're close with to just give them a reference experience because they have these thoughts and limiting beliefs that 
if I share this, then they're going to reject me or hate me or think I'm weird. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it oftentimes creates the exact opposite of effects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd love to hear some things that you, um, you work on with your clients um, when it comes to like confidence coaching. What are some of the areas that you like to focus on to help um, the, the folks that you work with to start actually building a sense of inner confidence? At the moment, most of my clients are working on purpose. And I feel like, you know, when, when somebody has a sense of purpose and clarity of where they're going, like that just gives a whole lot of meaning to life. And then all the other areas, they just kind of fall into place. But this is like the main thing, you know, that purpose. Everybody comes asking me about purpose. What's my life purpose? What am I supposed to do here to do? What, what's my soul? Blah, blah, blah. And it's, it, it's literally the thing that makes the biggest change in people's lives. You know, that feeling of belonging to something bigger than, than, than they are. You know, like a, a mission, a, a, a something to, to, um, to pursue and something to accomplish. Yeah, I love that. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that 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 seems to be like that foundational piece that that kind of ends up making it so that other parts of life seem to just follow suit once you start to connect to that purpose? Because purpose is always connected to God. It's mm-hmm. always with, with something bigger, with service, with serving others, with helping others, with being the best version of yourself that you can be so that you can serve others so that you can connect with God so that you can connect others with God. Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I like the way you describe that. And I think for some of you like that are listening to this, um, that don't connect with the word God, you know, you can use like universe, you can, you can use, you know, whatever, whatever you, you feel like is connected to, but you're right. Like, I think it connects you to the part of you that loves deeply that has a sense of like givingness that I, you already have enoughness and now you can, when you're connected to that and you're able to share it with the world and in whatever way you share it, Mm -hmm. uh, it starts to seep into other parts of your life. You start to get that sense of connection to self and in other areas of your life too. Yeah. I love that. And what is like one thing that you see like, um, or you'd recommend people look at, you know, for someone that feels really lost out there, or, um, like what's one, one area or one way you, you would like, maybe like one little nugget um, that would help them start to like, maybe find it, maybe more clarity or maybe start to get a, a, a step closer to what that might be for them. I would say any kind of spiritual practice, because that, that is what people are missing mostly nowadays this is like a kind of worldwide worldwide disease you know people are disconnected from the real self from the heart from the soul from god and this is this is the medicine to to really find that place back in your in your, within yourself that's connected with the whole of creation and the whole of universe and you know god whatever whatever you call it but yeah that is the main thing yeah, it's interesting you say that. Uh, I know you actually, before we started this call, you actually mentioned that coming out of college, you had like um, a bit of a breakdown and it led you to go to India. And um, it sounds like there where you had your uh, bit of a spiritual awakening that actually started to move you into this direction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, after my <laughs> mental breakdown, spiritual awakening, peace I, yeah i went to india and i met my spiritual master that i'm i'm with always now <laughs> like she's she's always going to be my master right and yeah and then i lived for five years in the ashram in a very strict disciplined way you know and we we did like maybe five hours practice every day um and it was very because the thing is like anything you practice for a long time it just becomes a part of you mm-hmm. so then a lot of time you know singing and praying and meditating and all of that so that just that just became like a very integral part of me and that is you know that is what i 
I'm able to now share with people because I've cultivated that that fire, that spiritual fire that you know that can light other people's fire now. Yeah, I love the way you describe that, and I think that's exactly what it is: is when you when you start to get really clear on your purpose, when you like when you really wake up, you now have the capacity to with your like energy to like help others wake up yeah. as well and and see um, the, the kind of the illusions of their own fears, the illusions of their um, limiting beliefs about their self worth, uh, mm -hmm. about their you know their own power, and that in itself is a very like it's a big gift to give to the world because lighting them allows them to wake up and now start to light others as well. It's like a domino effect. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. It actually reminds me, like I actually a few years ago also had a, a big mental breakdown as well. Like I actually, <laughs> I think these all start with like mental breakdowns, right? Like you, um, you know, I, 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 you do things, you do things a way that you know, deeply doesn't connect with you. It doesn't really intuitively go with you and you keep forcing it until, um, your my your body and mind say fuck this I, i'm tired of that and and you break down and it's actually within that that breakdown that you actually can can deeply connect to your highest self and and actually see like oh i, I see what i've been doing all this time and, and yeah. yeah it's a great place to it's a great place within your pain you will find a lot of truth and answers to be able to rise out of that mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So for yeah. those of you that are struggling deeply right now um, or feeling you're in a lot of pain, um, stop. Don't run from it. Actually let yourself go through it and, and yes. just be open to it and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, pain is a gift, really. It's like I've grown the most in my life out of really painful experiences. They've just brought me up so, so much higher. Always, always, always. Like pain is always a gift. Absolutely. And it's interesting. I think a lot of people think, well, do I always have to go through like vast amount of pain? Like, will pain always be my motivator? And my answer to them is actually, uh, no, not really. It, it, it will be in the beginning a lot more. But um, I think as we, we go upward, you'll find the enjoyment, love, enthusiasm, gratitude, uh, fueling you a lot more. And that actually will inspire you more. Yes. Yes, and service, you know, service, like my spiritual master always, always um, says that service is, is the way to, to reach enlightenment and to, to grow, right? Because when you serve other, you, you serve yourself. It's like you're the first person that experiences that joy of giving, that, that uh, like open heartedness, you know, and that's, that's what I'm learning now in my coaching, like I'm, I'm learning so much from from service from from doing my coaching that I don't you know I don't need to experience like vast amounts of pain anymore and having this you know huge mental breakdowns and stuff because I'm getting all the lessons that I need from doing my work and from service. It's awesome. That's beautiful. It's it's really it's interesting interesting what you just said is like when you give your gift of joy or love or service to others um, you have to give it to yourself first. Like you have to generate it within yourself to be able to give it outwardly. Yeah. And that, that's, that's actually, um, it's a really great way of putting it because I, I think uh, it also goes the other way. If, if you, if the energy we're putting out into the world is for example, lots of anger, then what you'll attract in your life is a lot of anger. You'll, you'll, you'll plant the seeds of anger into the world and it'll grow and multiply. Right. If you, um, plant the seeds of being a victim or blaming, well, the world will always point their finger back at you and, and won't give you anything, right? So it, it responds in the way that we, we give, what we give out into the world. That's kind of the, the simple and hidden secret to, to all this. What makes us attractive, what makes us not attractive is, is what we decide to put out and give to the world, right? I create my life, everybody else creates the life, but not everyone is ready to hear that. Not everyone is ready to accept that the full responsibility that comes with that, you know, because, oh, he said this and she said that and he did this and he did that. No, no. If I create my life, I create everything that happens in my life, not just the good parts or not just this part, not just that, everything, you know. If you take ownership, you take ownership for everything. And how much power does it feel like you have when you do that? When you like, oh, God, just limitless. Yeah. 
it's an amazing feeling like when you can um you know take responsibility and, and not blame maybe like your looks or not blame your um financial situation or not blame uh you know the city you live in right if you can come inward then now th those things don't have power over you anymore and you mm -hmm. have the ability to create more and, and be more in your life mm -hmm. yeah blame is victimhood mm -hmm. and i think there's a lot of guys out here that that actually genuinely believe um you know they and they justify themselves that because they don't have like the looks or the height or like the money that you know attractive women like you wouldn't like them right like they would they wouldn't be attracted to them what would you say to that idea or those beliefs or to the guys that that think that way i would say first of all thank you i don't i don't feel particularly attractive i mean yeah i mean whatever maybe my energy is attractive but i i totally understand why you know why men would think that because i i think that about myself and really it's nothing to do with how you look it's nothing to do with anything those are just excuses there are they're just excuses like it's it's about your energy it's about how um how much you cultivate yourself and how much confidence you gain and how much you work on your energy how much you work on your masculine or your feminine energy that's that's it really and you know anyone anyone can transform themselves and gain enough um like self-worth and self-esteem self-love confidence all of that to to be successful in any area of life like it, it's all possible it is it's just it's just the limits in our minds that that stop us yeah i, I i'm with you i i think i think that when most people realize that they're the only ones getting in their way right then when they get out of their own way they can actually see like the potential of what they could be right it, it, yeah, and it's yeah. Just like, wow, what have i been doing all these years like uh. what? <laughs> yeah I, I you know what i like about thomas is he explains it really easily it's like um you have everything you need right now if it's, if it's just you accept yourself in any given moment then you're attractive you're irrefutably attractive and if you reject yourself in any given moment you're ir irrefutably unattractive. It's, it's just yeah. a kind of a very simple, simple way of looking at it is there's mm -hmm. like no really big breakthrough or like this one moment where like, Oh my God, now I'm there and I'm enlightened. It's just like, no, it's like on a moment to moment basis, you're just accepting who you are, what you're about and your role in people's lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so would love to hear more about, um, you know, some of, the, are you taking new clients right now, by the way? Are you like open for, or do you filled up? Yeah, yeah, I'm you taking, taking clients. Um, tell, uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more about um, what coaching's like with, you know, what, what is it? Tell us maybe a little bit about your program or, or um, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, if someone wants to get in touch with you um, to learn more about uh, igniting their purpose, their confidence. We'd love to hear more about the details of that so you can share that with the group. Mm-hmm. Well, I've just literally today launched my pretty new website. So my website is live. It's roxanabrostek.com. And I have this amazing, oh my God, amazing program. So it's 10 weeks. And at the beginning, there's like three hour intensive, uh, what, did it, what did we call it? Um, confidence prophecy workshop. So it's three hour, like really intense. We go into all areas of life and like look look at which parts you know you're not confident and which parts you're not yet the best version of yourself <clears throat> which parts you're not like the most confident and then over the coming 10 weeks we go deeply into into like healing those parts and bringing those parts to the best best version possible version so yeah it's i i'm so excited about this program it's literally like the best the best thing ever yeah so that's wow. that's the way people can work with me awesome very mm -hmm. cool and how would how would someone get in contact with you what's the best way to get in contact with you um through here facebook yeah it's going to be on facebook right yeah yeah, yeah. so what i can do is i can post i can post uh like um i'll tag you in the in the post mm -hmm. and then we can in the comment section post the link to your website mm -hmm. and uh so if anyone that's listening to this that's 
looking to improve their confidence, uh, find more purpose in their lives, um, check out Roxana. I think, you know, just like even in this short 45 minutes, just chatting with her, I could feel that, you know, she's the real deal. She like definitely seems to embody and, and, and give off that, that vibe that um, she has some powerful stuff to share with you guys. So uh, thank you so much for joining me for this call. I really appreciate you sharing your insights from the, the feminine perspective. I think it, you know, give a lot of value to our guys and some common misconceptions. So um, it's great to hear from, you know, the, the uh, feminine side of, uh, of the world of, you know, what, what they actually experience on our side, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.